Welcome to this video series developed for adult and developmental educators on improving teaching and learning. My name is Russ Hodges and I'm an associate professor in the College of Education at Texas State University. Parts of my responsibility involve coordinating and teaching a learning frameworks course for undergraduate students. The activity depicted in this video follows students as they analyze their note-taking skills and are exposed to two note-taking systems. These note-taking systems are more than simply templates. They require students to preview content before class and to revise and review notes after class. Okay, folks. Let's, uh, let's get a little bit of feedback just overall from the activity itself. Did you find this activity? activity to be helpful uh, and just so, sort of the reactions from the group leaders having led your group in this discussion and Katie if you would want um, okay so basically um, we all had pretty much the same answers and struggled in the same areas what were the areas that you your group examples and Excuse abbreviations examples and abbreviations. abbreviations okay what type of struggles particularly with with those two. For examples, like we would limit ourselves to one example or two for each topic or so. And I think you're just hitting it right on the head of the nail when you have identified that because oftentimes we write definitions but we forget that we're going to probably be tested a lot by example. And so having one or two examples that correlate with the terms or the concepts can be extremely valuable as you're preparing for an exam. So I think they'll do a really good job. Basically. And so we, like, 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 so we didn't have our notes that way. Kind of like, that's it. Same kind of You know, the professors can talk at a rate of up to 250 words per minute, depending on who you have. And yet we can't write it near that point. So we have to be able to listen and to try to derive meaning, which can be hard when you're listening and then trying to figure out what it means. And then you're going to try to translate it into some notes. And you probably have already realized you can't write down word for word every word the professor is saying. So you're paraphrasing. And actually, that's even better for your memory when you're able to take something that you hear and then put it into your own frame of reference. It's part of the processing and reflecting that we have talked about is so important in the learning process. So you read about various note-taking methods. What I thought we would do is just let you reflect on particularly the Cornell note-taking method and the T-note uh, note-taking method. As you may recall, one is for declarative knowledge mostly, the other for procedural knowledge. Oftentimes when you have a class that is problem-solving in nature, you might find T-notes to work well. What I thought I would do is ask each group to take one of those, put your heads together, draw an illustration of, to represent each of those note-taking methods, and then you'll have a chance to explain, your group leader will explain to the entire class each. All right, and why don't you folks take Cornell, and you folks take T-notes, and I have some markers for you, and you know, if you don't get it right the first time, you have plenty of sheets to play with. But we're going to take about 10 minutes to do this, okay? Let me get the markers for you. Feel free to get out and move around and help destiny in creating that graphic. We now observe as two groups of students compare and contrast two note-taking formats. Cornell Notes, developed by Walter Pauk at Cornell University in the 1950s, is a systematic format for organizing lecture notes that are mostly declarative in nature. That is, notes consisting of mostly facts and concepts and theories. T-Notes, originally created in 1983 by Archie Davis and Elvis Clark, two community college educators, is a note-taking format for both declarative knowledge but mostly procedural knowledge-based courses, such as mathematics or accounting. Watch as these students begin to analyze the two formats. Well, one of the things I really liked is that you have Bloom's taxonomy, the revised taxonomy over here. And whenever we compare and contrast, where are we on Bloom's taxonomy? Which level? Um, is which one? Analyze. Analyze, right. 
So you're going through an analysis. So talk for a minute about how these systems are alike first, and then we'll go with how they differ. Okay? And just kind of <coughs> quickly just give some feedback. We're just doing some brainstorming. Well, they basically both have notes and how to do stuff and like information. I think um, they kind of have like a main idea, and then like your what you're doing it is kind of like over there. Like your main idea is your steps, and then your little notes, like your definitions, are like your examples. So I kind of see how that similars. Good, good, good. The, a difference can be that uh, one has the summary, the other one doesn't. Okay, okay. so that's a difference. Good, good, good. Anybody? A second similarity is that they both, even though they're different in how they organize it, they both have separations in their units. Yeah, so it's a way of dividing up the information. And again, possibly for, to facilitate review, right, of the information and to help you process. Good. How else are they similar or how else are they do they differ? To me, it seems like Latino has a topic while Cornell notes has main ideas and topics. Good, good, good. Excellent. Also, uh, dates on both notes that was, they took up dates on. Yes, good old awesome dates. Good. Could you actually transform T notes for a declarative knowledge based course? Pretty easily, don't you think? Where, how would you do that? How would you turn T notes into a format for declarative type courses? You just add a line at the bottom. So, yeah, you just <laughs> add a line at the bottom. What would go where? Um, I think this would go in the main idea as a topic by itself, and then this would go into the actual note part with the definition. Exactly. That's where y'all were kind of originally thinking. Yes. Part. So, I wanted you to have a chance to share that as well. Developing good note-taking skills can take time and practice. The activity was intended to reinforce students' knowledge of the two note-taking systems, to encourage their use, and ultimately to encourage the transferability of the two note-taking systems to their other courses and their career.